。嗨，大家好。Hello， 大家好。Oh， I thought we we're supposed to do English. <笑> Hi everybody. Hi everyone. Um, <coughs> so happy Chinese New Year. It's a、uh, Lantern Festival today. It's been、uh, two weeks, three weeks since we since our last episode. So, starting、uh, New Year, we're gonna do something new. So I'm wearing the lab coat. So and、uh, I'm holding our usual cat. And so today's topic is go.、Uh, it's about breast lumps. So whether it's、uh, fibroid or、um, or cancer or cancer or <coughs>、um, any type of breast lumps. So because、uh, in Chinese medicine they are all、uh, they are all seen they are all been. Treated the same way.、Uh, let me explain why. Because、um, in in the breast there are many、uh, lymphatic、uh, ducts and channels, and、um, <coughs> that's where the that's usually where the lumps are accumulated, whether it's fibroid or cancer or whatever.、Um, <coughs> so the breast.、Uh, Sorry, the lymphatic、uh, channels, and is also connected to the breast,、uh, the milk ducts. So it's the channel that milk flows. And、um, if you've seen one of my previous episodes,、uh, I've explained that in Chinese medicine,、um, the breast milk and the the blood from the menstruation is the same source. So they are. Actually, transforming one to the other、uh, <coughs> during the period. So,、uh, in Chinese medicine, the the lymphatic system is considered as a water passage. So, you know, our body is formed by seventy percent of water, and this water has has to have a channel to go through, like our blood vessel, our、um, blood systems, right? Circulative system, and how come it's never been really taught in school or been talked about much? Because in the Western medicine, they haven't、uh, they haven't tackled this part yet. And but in Chinese medicine, since like two three thousand years ago, they already knew that this is a very important、uh, system for our water metabolism and circulation. So, whenever there is a breast lump, it's at、uh, at is formed at the water passage、uh, of our of the breast. So you can think of it as your one of your the pipes in your home is kind of clogged,、uh, or it can be a toilet that's being clogged. <coughs> so what do you do when the toilet is clogged? You try then. You try to flush it and make sure it's unclogged, right? So that's pretty much what Chinese medicine、uh, treats this type of problems. It's、uh, finding ways to unclog the the lymphatic system, the the breast、uh, in the breast and the, the milk ducts. <coughs> so because、uh, the lymphatic system belongs to water passage, it's called San Jiao in Chinese medicine, and It's it also very closely related to liver and gallbladder. So, whenever this type of problem,、uh, we usually find that it's caused by an imbalance in the in the gallbladder and water passage system,、uh, the San Jiao system.、Um, <coughs> you don't have to remember the name, but just remember that it's a water passage in our body. So when this happens, there is a certain type of herbs that we have to use. It's called chai hu, which works、uh, specifically on the san jiao system. And also, when there is a accumulation in our body, we tend to use、uh, herbs like mu li and longgu, which is、um, 
the oyster shells and uh, animal fossils uh, because their function is to break up the break up the accumulation in our body so it's widely used when you have any sort of accumulation whether uh, it's fibrosis or uh, some sort of tumor or any sort of lumps so that's generally what's used but everybody's a little bit different case is a little bit different so you know so I still have to see the patient in order to determine uh, what's best for them and also everybody's uh, reaction to the to the herbal medicine is a little bit different so sometimes when I think this patient needs a medicine but after uh, this patient took the a medicine and he reacts uh, completely different as I expected then I kind of have to try B medicine to see if that fits the patient better so because medicine there is uh, nothing that works 100% and um, not everything is perceived as, is, as it shows so sometimes a patient will show like a, a very obvious pattern to me and I, I like prescribe according to this pattern but but the body reacts completely different so I kind of have to dig deeper and find out what's uh, what are other information what's missing from the patient and then maybe go through a few different medicines to to in order to kind of pinpoint uh, target uh, the body type of that patient so <clears throat> Um, any questions? Yes, I do have a question. Um, it's about uh, sometimes we do feel like the the breast a little bit swollen, and then uh, when I press it, there is uh, some pressure. Uh, especially lately, I do have that kind of feeling. I don't know if it's because my period is coming or there's I'm going through some changes in my body. Is there? anything that I should be worried or that's just something that's a lack of in my body and it's time to book an appointment with you <laughs> so let, let me explain how where period comes from in Chinese medicine so the food that we eat in our stomach uh, the spleen and the stomach will help digest the food and process and turn it into nutrients so this nutrient will be informed in the form of fluid and this fluid is sent to all over our body to wherever it's needed uh, wherever the nutrient is needed and part of the nutrient goes to the breast uh, so before so after your period your breast will start to get slightly bigger each day uh, towards uh, the first day of your period so it's because the body is preparing itself for 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 a baby for in case you are uh, in case you have a baby so there is a milk that can supply for the baby even though it's not directly breastfeeding to the baby in the stomach but that's where the nutrient is stored for the baby in your tummy so that's about a way of body preparing uh, for our, you know, for our, for our children having uh, just during the pregnancy. <clears throat> so, so after uh, the ovulation and uh, there is no fertilized eggs, then the body will realize, okay, well, I'm not pregnant, so this uh, nutrient stored in the breast is should no longer need it and it needs to go out of the body because consider the nutrient like milk okay if you put the milk and out in the room temperature for a week it's gonna go bad and it's go sour so same thing with the nutrient stored in the breast it, it can go bad so that's why it need to be replaced just as everything else there is metabolism the old need to be replaced by the new so so the the nutrients in the breast will kind of, will go down to the uterus and kind of turn into blood let's say because 
the fluid uh, can enter and exit the blood vessel. When the fluid enters the blood vessel, it becomes blood. And if it enters the lymphatic system, it becomes some sort of lymphatic fluid. It's the same source. So just don't make a big deal out of it because breast milk is white and blood is red and you think they are not the same. Uh, they appear different, but the source is the same. So, so it's normal to have breast, some sort of breast swelling before the period. Sometimes it can be sensitive to touch or um, if it's more serious, uh, there can be like swelling or kind of swelling type of pain. It's called the, uh, distension type of feeling. And then after period comes, it will, the breast will deflate and then the milk will become period blood and then goes out of your body. So that's the normal cycle. So um, <clears throat> if the breast uh, doesn't swell at all, before a period, then there's something wrong. Right? If it's if they are swelling too much, there's also something wrong. So it has to be some sort of kind of in between balance um, for the breast swelling. So if the breast is you don't have any swelling, any distension at all, that means your body is not uh, turning enough food into nutrients, or as or it's not storing enough nutrients in the breast. So you probably have uh, less uh, blood during your period in my ends shorter than usual so things like that or if you have too much uh, breast swelling kind of pain that means uh, either there's an accumulation like a clog in your in the milk ducts or in the lymph system and there can be something wrong as well um, so it really depends from case to case so that means as long as I still feel the changes in my breasts I'm still ovulating, correct? Um, like my mom probably doesn't uh, actually, feel that anymore. Actually, um, are there are cases where uh, women after menopause, they still have the breast um, kind of swelling and deflating uh, each month because our the body is still doing that way. But because after men uh, menopause, the in Chinese sense, we say the uterus, the channel to uterus is closed. So this uh, nutrient doesn't go to uterus anymore. It kind of goes to your large intestine or your um, your bladder. That's the way of uh, the body works after menopause. It still needs to be replaced and replenished. Okay. So after w after women having menopause, it's um, if they tend to have constipation, it's really not a good sign because uh, once consider it like a traffic jam. You have one tra you starting have one traffic jam uh, in the, this and this end of the row is eventually going to lead to this end of the row. So, so it's very important to keep this side flowing so there will be oh, no traffic jams um, in the in the on the road anyways. And I would like to discuss a case. This is more of a, more like a technical information, more detailed. Um, there is a lady who uh, came to me. Uh, she, she was 32 years old. Um, the reason she came because she wants to get pregnant. And um, she, when she came to me, she, she had been trying for actually only two months maybe that's a little bit short anyway so that's the main reason that she came to me but besides that she has um, lots of other issues too she was diagnosed with hypothyroid so the thyroid hormone um, is too so it's not producing enough hormones for the body and she was the doctor prescribed synthetic uh, thyroid hormones for her but she doesn't want it uh, she doesn't want to take it for the rest of her life because um, you know with Western drugs it's once you you don't have your body stop producing anything the, the doctor will tell you you need to take this for the rest of your life um, <clears throat> oh hi Woma. 
I will, ma. So she didn't want to take it for the rest of her life, and actually, she went to uh, she went to a new uh, natural path before it came. She came to see me, and then she was uh, the natural path doctor told her to take magnesium, and kind of helped her a little bit with the uh, hypothyroid issue. The main reason, uh, the main symptoms for her uh, hypothyroid was she gets very tired every day, like she is like drop dead tired around you know eight o'clock at night and she needs sleep maybe 10 12 hours a day and then still wake up tired and that's the the second issue that she had the third issue is that she had uh, she was diagnosed with uh, fibroic uh, cyst in her breast and she, it was hurting pretty much every day she can feel that the cyst is hurting and she so she did ultrasound for it and I think she did two um, the second one after uh, she did a second one probably around the time when she came to see me and the size was bigger than the, the when she, the first time she did it so she was kind of she was kind of really scared and the doctor kind of told her uh, there's an option to remove it surgically and she was actually considered doing that but I told her like Chinese medicine works very well for that she doesn't need to get an operation uh, just because she has a cyst um, even, if she, even if she goes through the operation and removing the cyst it doesn't guarantee that she won't have another one so because <coughs> so as, a breast cyst is like, um, let's say, consider it like a clogged toilet in your home. You can have a clogged toilet by because of toilet paper or because of some sort of garbage that people put in there. Doesn't matter what's in there. Your job is still to unclog the toilet. It's not to fix the problem. You you need to unclog the toilet, not not to you. If you are thinking about fixing the problem by removing the toilet, then you, you're thinking your thinking has something wrong with it, right? So by doing surgery, uh, removing the the cyst is like removing a clogged toilet from your from your bathroom. You no longer have a toilet to use. What happens if you if all your all the toilets in your home are clogged? Are you gonna remove all your toilets and then you have no toilets to we'll use? Go to the park. <laughs> go to the park. Yeah, until the the toilet at the park is clogged too. <laughs> right? So that's not the good way to fix the problem. We need to fix the problem from from its cause and it, and we need to understand where the problem comes from and then we can fix it. And <clears throat> she also so back to the patient. She also has um ringing in her ears for about uh, a year so like a high pitch ringing noise um, it's honestly this is something that is I find very difficult to to treat in terms of Chinese medicine uh, <clears throat> because honestly I don't know why like um, we I tried many things and it, it has very kind of low success rate right? so so I told her that this might need some luck and um, so her main symptom is that her hands and feet are extremely cold she never had any warm hands it's always cold in the in summertime her husband kind of complains about it because she's always trying to uh, put her hands onto her husband to get get them warm and at night time her feet is like freezing cold they never get they never get warm um, and she tend and then she tends to forget to drink water uh, her poop is kind of very dry and then unfinished and in the past a year past year she gets she has this uh, lingering cold that that takes a month to heal and then pretty soon after she gets another one and then she also has like um, migraines on the side of her head she feels tired um, her period is uh, usually late like 32 to 35 days and then 
and it only came for about four days and then it's completely gone <clears throat> and before her period she'll get like acne outbreaks on her face uh, she gets very cold she even like say it's like kind of like chills and she will get diarrhea headaches and cramps so these are her main symptoms <clears throat> and you know like some some of the viewers have some basic uh, Chinese medicine knowledge will know that when oh you know when the hands and feet are icy cold it means uh, your your body is the cold type you need to drink lots of warm soup or uh, you need to eat some warm food and she did that ginger a lot like ginger and uh, something like si wu tang um, to kind of replenish your blood and help your body generate blood and it never worked for her <clears throat> the reason because uh, her body type isn't cold the reason uh, her hands and feet are extremely cold is because her body types tend to trap all the heat in the torso the heat never goes out to the limbs so when I check her body uh, the skin is very very hot when I touch her tummies the skin is hot uh, the temperature is higher than normal but the hands and feet are like extremely cold so <clears throat> it's it's very common when we when there is a uh, sun jiao problem when it's or it's called a sao yang problem and it that's just very typical for for us so the main prescription that I gave her contains chai hu, for, uh, chai hu in the herbs it, uh, chai hu helps disturb, disperse this heat to to the hands and hands and feet so the heat is no longer trapped and after like two three two weeks she could feel that her hands are warmer already and in the formula there wasn't anything that extremely warm to kind of heat her up it's just kind of mild uh, with a little bit of ginger but that wasn't a lot but main ingredient is chai hu so she was warmer and then and then maybe during like the third week she has a bit of a cold again and she she said that her symptoms are like way milder than before that every time she had a cold it was very serious for a month and that time she was better like within a week or so so she was pretty happy about it and then after she saw me for like uh, six seven weeks she called me and that said her period is late I was like what what's going on and then <laughs> after two seconds she told me she's pregnant so I was really happy about it and she was really happy too so that's a uh, successful case and she's she now is um i think so she's pregnant in december so now three four months pregnant and um she was no longer her her hypothyroid is some issues is kind of resolved she no longer feels uh, tired but now she feels tired because of the pregnancy um so and the breast sis was um it no longer hurts like she doesn't feel the pain anymore and she kind of feels the size has uh shrunk a little bit although she hasn't gone back to uh to to do a ultrasound check um so yeah it's a like a very typical case even though there are lots of issues um but in terms of Chinese medicine, we kind of tied it down to one, one main cause. It's her sun jiao issue, so it's her water passage issue, and that's trapping the heat in the torso, not getting out to the limbs. So once we I pinpoint that and narrow down to a formula that worked for her, which also contains chai hu, long gu, and mu li, so it kind of correspond to what I said earlier, and she was. Once we narrow it down, she's been taking that for like a month or so, and now she's off herbs and acupuncture, and and 
I told her come come back to see me if there's any um, any issues that you're experiencing with the pregnancy. So she hasn't contacted me yet, and so I assume she's okay. And so we'll see. I'll give you any updates uh, if I hear from her. Questions? Yeah, I just have a quick question. When you mentioned about that patient that she thought her body is really cold, so she's been trying a lot of uh, hot water, ginger, and everything. It didn't work. Um, do we have to go to see a uh, TCN to know our body type or if there's any... Uh, um, way we can examine or determine what type of body we are. Honestly, it's better that you go see uh, go see a TCM doctor or practitioner because it's our body is kind of complicated, and we we went to school for four years to study just the basic uh, basic of the basic in TCM, and then okay, you, and we have to read a lot of books and. Um, <coughs> Also, gain a lot of experience to kind of learn how to exactly determine what suits you and what type of body you are. And it, we also have to kind of test the medicine too. You know, to, we can like bef usually the first time I see a patient, I can you know narrow it down from here to here, and then after I give her give the patient herbs or acupuncture, then I can narrow it down a little bit more until. After a few, maybe three, three times or four visits, and then we can kind of really pinpoint it. So it's not an easy thing. And if you are really interested in TCM, of course you can go uh, read some books and study, and um, that will help you kind of narrow it down from you know here to here. But um, it it does take a lot of studying. Okay. Yeah, the reason why I ask is uh, I realize that in recent years, all the uh, like the internet information or yeah, the so-called um, health care or medicine knowledge is like you can see it online daily, and then there's always a very shocking uh, title like if you feel cold, then do this: drink hot water with lemon, but. I don't think it's just that easy. Even like for me, as a wife of a TCM doctor, sometimes when I read this, like, okay, if you want to lose weight and then do this, something really simple, uh, drink some certain soup, but I know that probably it doesn't work that way. I'm just so afraid of most people uh, want it to seek for uh, a shortcut and then they get misled by that kind of information. So, don't try that. Yeah, yet. because now the <clears throat> this this day um, the in, the information is overflown uh, oh, on the internet. It, everybody is trying to grab your attention to read their stuff so they can get paid. Um, so there are a lot of shocking titles just so you can you will click it and. Honestly, you have to understand nothing works hundred percent in in medicine. Like if somebody tells you this works hundred hundred percent of the time, I suggest you run as far away as you can, <laughs> because there's no hundred percent in medicine. Like even for the best best of the best is like if they have like a sixty seventy percent success rate and it's really really high already. Like even in Western medicine, when a drug is approved by FDA, um, as long as the drug has like 20% or 30% success rate, it will get approved and be put on the market. So, so don't think of us as, you know, don't we're we're not we're not gods. We're not um, <clears throat> we cannot perform magic on you and then help you heal in. A short period of time is still Chinese medicine is still a medicine and there are no honestly there are no shortcuts and some people you go to someone who's better than others you'll heal faster than rather than slower so that's the difference in in the, the speed of the recovery but there it still takes time and still takes effort and you have to make change in your in your life and your lifestyle and your diet, you know, to, to get better. 
you cannot just completely rely on one thing and and you're just you don't want to do the work right <coughs> I think we have a um, comment uh, sometimes it's really hard to choose what to believe to mention inf too much information nowadays yeah yes that's true, that's true. Um, so I know it's everything it, there are a lot of things on the internet um, honestly you you can try those things for maybe like a week or so <clears throat> if you try it for a week nothing changes or uh, nothing to not I don't mean your main symptoms I mean your your general health like your sleep your appetite your uh, water metabolism your bowel movement your urination um, if there is no improvement in any of these areas then it probably not suited for you I would suggest that you stop if it works then great if it doesn't just you, you tried it and it doesn't work but don't um, don't do it for like a long time and then realizing one day you realize it's hurting you rather than helping you yeah okay mm -hmm. all right so thanks for oh, watching sorry. okay There's sorry one more comment. Also, everyone, everyone has a different body type sometimes it works on others but not work doesn't um. work on me yeah, it's true because nothing works for everybody. Even if I know in uh, Asian communities, they they really um, they care a lot about these uh, secret formula or um, inherited a secret formula from you know third, three generation before a seventh generation, what that type of things. Um, <coughs> Of course, they it, it works um, on people, but in order for something to work for everybody, it has to be very generalized. So the effect can be lower. It's not as um, <clears throat> not as pinpointing to you to a certain body type. <clears throat> so. Imagine you, you, okay, I don't want to use this example, but I can't think of anything better. So if you're an, an assassin, you want to kill a lot of people, you wouldn't use one bullet only, right? You would use like a gun with multiple bullets. So <clears throat> AK-47. Yeah, so for us, for something that works for a wide range of people, you need to have like a wide range of um, herbal medicine ingredients in it and that's basically how, how, how it works okay uh, all right that's all the questions thanks for watching thank bye you bye bye, bye.